Okay, <clears throat> so what do I want to do? Get this a bit lower. <clears throat> okay, I want to do. What do I want to do? Ah, what the hell? Just want to fix the streaming or texture pool there. Come on, go away. Okay, I want to finish the brick level. <sighs> Basic idea here is um, we're gonna place a. Where is this guy? A level. Um, a quest activator. No, I've already placed a quest activator. Let's go through the quest quickly. <clears throat> it's a simple quest for this guy. What do we have here? Car. Um, provide quest. That's not it. I'm gonna go look at this guy here. <clears throat> Come on, man. Okay, looks like nothing. So, this quest has two objectives. The first one is gonna be you need to find some secret, the second one is gonna be escape. It's gonna be really simple. And the objectives themselves have nothing attached to them. Jeez, it's more about the description. Um, and then you're going to be awarded some XP when you complete the quest. It really irritates me when it opens up this little summary view. It's annoying. So the second objective is going to be escape the brig. <clears throat> so there's going to need to be some triggers in the game that's going to be telling you, okay, cool, you've completed something or you haven't. There's already some encounters in here. When you head down here, there's going to be some enemy fish here. But I think... <clears throat> and when you're down here, this is where you need to escape from, right? You need to, you need to find or enter this cage here, retrieve. Oh, you don't have to. <laughs> There's more than one way to retrieve this um, this object in here because it's a physics object. So I'll leave that to, for you to figure out. Ever? Um, I don't know how it's possible yet, but it is possible. You could you could shoot it and stuff. No, I'm digressing here. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is as you enter this area <clears throat> from the outside world, then you're gonna you're gonna be presented with the quest. Um, if you've already completed it, then um, it's just gonna it's gonna be in your completed list here, or whatever, and then it's not gonna provide you with the quest again. So that's how the quest gets initiated, just by this little trigger here. <clears throat> Her. So the plan was, player's gonna go move through these this area here because there's gonna be nowhere else to go. 
Actually, there is somewhere else to go, and I need to block that off. And I, I want to use a destructible here. So maybe I'll just use a placeholder for now. And those destructibles, I'm tr trying to think what I want to do, how I want to, how I want to make those, uh, trigger those. So let's, let's do that now. <clears throat> So I'm going to use this quest activated blueprint. Come on, man. Quest activated blueprint. You. Let's create a new child blueprint here and call this the grid. This is actually the controller. So you could create but the way that I've done this, you could create little objects in the game and then make any um, make them uh, an instance of this. <clears throat> so how this basically works is you provide it with a quest name, uh, an activation objective, and then a deactivation objective, uh, which is actually optional. You can set that to 99 or whatever. And then there's going to be some functions, uh, events here that's going to get called. You have like, come on, man, come on. Fresh actor. First actor, uh, events, activate object. So <clears throat> this event is going to get raised when this condition is met. The um, particular quest in question. <laughs> You've already completed that obje ob objective. If you make the zero, then it will be um, when you receive the quest. So you can use these events then to to make stuff in the game work uh, request driven and then there's also a uh, I think it's completed uh, quest completed so you can use that to perhaps destroy this actor if the quest has been completed and the guy the player comes in afterwards into this level and you um, don't want those things to happen again <clears throat> I'm gonna try and keep this simple for now in the capstan quest, I went a little bit crazy um, with its quest, so it's, it does a whole bunch of stuff. This is typically not what I want to do with the controller, I want to try and keep it a lot more simple. So I went a little bit overboard there. Okay, so let me see. <clears throat> I wanted to move through this area. This area is going to get blocked off, regardless of the quest with a destructible <clears throat> that can only be destroyed with a uh, attractable sphere. Then you're going to move to this area. I want a trigger here, a quest-based trigger. I'm still thinking about it. I might just do this every time because it's it's it, it might be fine if you want to come back in here and just reuse your. Um, attract and throw skill over and over because the more you use it the the more you can upgrade it and I, I don't have any uh, boss fights or anything like that in this level so <clears throat> it should have some uh, replayability I'm hoping maybe so I might just make that uh, not quest driven so then <clears throat> that door's going to shut that hole's going to shut there then you have to move through here what's what's going to happen here <clears throat> then you're going to enter the cage right or get the ball out however you can but before you do that you need the skill so i want to drop something about probably here somewhere a little bit hidden i uh, just need to keep in mind there's going to be static meshes here that get spawned so they might they might they might interfere um, and there's a difference between the seeds when you play an editor and when you when you package So I'll, I'll need to test the package build as well. Okay, then you get this guy. Also, when once you enter here, this this guy's gonna show. Now there's encounters all over. There's uh, low to medium, um, low to medium, what? Low to medium strength enemies that are gonna be that are gonna be annoying you. So if you come in here too early, you're just exploring the world and you're you're not you don't have enough skills or whatever. You know you could get into trouble and that's fine you could always 
you could always just uh, uh, reload a different save there's about five auto saves so that's an option okay so then you need to break this door come through here uh, this door will be non-breakable so you can't go through here but this one will so then you'll have to go through here and then here's just some more encounters I should really spruce it up a little so I might I might add to this later <coughs> but this is the the basis of it and then you're gonna finally head through here there's nothing's gonna chase you or whatever but this is where you're gonna head through for the final final pass through and this is all filled with with stuff <coughs> doesn't actually it looks more like this when you swim through here so there's a lot of stuff here then bam you're gonna break through here and then you're done so I'll need some sort of some sort of activator here to indicate you if you've completed um, those objectives so let's see how I'm gonna do that <coughs> Had a huge storm here. Damn it. Okay. <clears throat> All right. So the reason I'm calling this guy the quest controller is because I want him to be responsible for for controlling the. Uh, Controlling the quest. <clears throat> Gonna place him at the origin. I don't really care where that is. Um, and then I need to set the quest name here. I'm gonna do that in the blueprint itself. Come on, man. I don't wanna see the summary. Rocky. So the quest name will be whatever the blueprint's name is underscore capital C. This one's going to activate on zero, and I don't want him to deactivate, so I'm just going to set it to like four. And then his, <coughs> his tick is on one second. That's for performance. Yeah, that's right. Drop stuff. Drop stuff. Break it. So the first, the first thing I need here, let me just focus, uh, focus, 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 of the mongoose. I want an activator here. I'm gonna need some, some doors. <clears throat> I'm just gonna use these, these grids for now. And then I'll have to change them to destructibles. I think that's gonna work. Yeah, I think so. So, um, let's do this. <coughs> Start with a static mesh here. <coughs> That's the wrong button. Gonna be, uh, it's gonna need to scale up quite a bit. <coughs> I'll start with 75. So I'm gonna make sure my pulling distance is set. I'll make it 8,000. First, get out of shape. And then I want to position this guy where he should be. <clears throat> so now I'm going into the world editor and positioning him. If 
for this blueprint instance and not in the um, blueprint itself. Sure, where is he? He'll be at the origin somewhere. I'm getting hold of these. Get a feeling he's a little bit big. That's what she said. <clears throat> yeah, it's way too big. Okay, let's just let's just do this. Go for fifty-five. Just gotta make sure I'm not <clears throat> repositioning the blueprint because I do that sometimes and then big poo happens because then this thing's gonna move all over the place and all these children which is not what I want it's about right <clears throat> he's got full blocking G um, on him so you won't be able to swim through here but it's gonna look like you can so I might just put in some planks in between there but that's you know that's detailing so I don't wanna I don't wanna don't wanna, don't wanna put too much time into to all of that right now. So if I click this guy it's gonna select the top level of the blueprint again. So now if you're gonna be doing your your move transformations and stuff it's gonna be on the wrong on the wrong thing. So I want to make sure I'm clicking the right place. And then I'm uh, going to use something sneaky to get this guy um, moving like this. I, <clears throat> I don't want to deal with these values here. I just don't. Although I could, I mean, it's only the Z translating here. But I'd rather keep it a bit, keep it a bit. So I'm going to add a scene component here. If I can find it. Okay, and I'll call this the door root. And it's... <laughs> Man, seriously, guys, come on. What are you doing to me? Okay. So now I'm going to parent <clears throat> the door under the, the root here. So his transformation is totally zeroed out, which is what I want. Let's see what happens if I do this. Okay. So now I can <clears throat> translate this root here rather. gonna happen in game so that's that's cool so now I have clean values to work with here and if I set that back to zero the door will move back to the closed position so now I gotta decide <clears throat> if I want this at the I don't think I do I think I rather want the default position of this door to be to be open So now I can just move this guy down. Looks like 1,200 <clears throat> is the magic number there. Oh man, there's a gap there. Okay. Cool. thinking where I want to put the activator. <clears throat>
gonna put this guy uh, this guy's tick back to every frame because if he's going to be doing interpolations it's going to look weird if he only does it once a second it's going to look weird okay let's put an activator on in whatever Or if I can find it. <clears throat> Man. Looking for a collision sphere, sphere, sphere. Call this the door one activator. Doesn't need to be parented <clears throat> to anything. Probably around about a thousand here. <clears throat> Looking for overlap or dynamic. <clears throat> Looking for overlap events. Okay, let's give that a compound save. And then position that in the instance here. trigger before you're through but I also don't want you to be able to to get around it <clears throat> and once he's triggered he's um, gonna auto destroy so I'm just gonna make a bear Gonna, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna, let's get the radius here, bump it up too far. Oof, that's close. Okay, <clears throat> I'm gonna interpret it pretty quickly, so hopefully the player won't be able to just nudge it and hit back. It's always a possibility. Might be able to sneak past there. That should do it. Luckily I have this blocking geometry here, so I think that's going to do the trick. Okay, just give that a save. Just hook it up. <clears throat> going to go for the Begin overlap. So I'm going to be checking this in quite a few overlaps. So I'm just going to make a function here to make that easier. Take in an actor reference and return a boolean. Oh man, what are you doing?
Okay. Start the usual thing. Um, is it valid? Pass it to a character class. So this could be an AI. So I have to check these values here. Is it the main player? And <clears throat> he must not be possessed. And that's literally the return value. So I'll have two return nodes, one for false, one for true. I could use a uh, local variable, but I'm not gonna. Because I'm crazy. What? Okay, what <laughs> oh, that's my bad, I had to recompile. <laughs> Lost my return value here. Okay, make sure to hit compile here. <clears throat> Have to redo that. And then now it should be <clears throat> now it should be fine. And just return this result here. I should be able to just call this function here. And then I can just use this result. So if it's true, Close the door. So I need to go <clears throat> negative 1200. The door will never open, so I don't need to worry about going back. Sure, I'll just do that with a simple function, a uh, simple variable here, and just call this door one uh, local. It's actually a relative location. going to default to all zeros and it needs to be a vector come on man so if this is true I'm just going to set this guy what in the crap sticks to negative 1200 Okay, so this is just going to activate door one. <clears throat> then in my tick event, how do I, how do I, how do I get rid of this? Please go away. In my tick event, <clears throat> I'm going to be calling this quite a few times for different doors, so I'm going to try and make this a little bit more, a little bit more reusable. <clears throat> just give me, just give me one, one second.
看。Alright, so function, function, function. I'm gonna call this uh, enter door. There's so many ways to do this, and you know, there's there's always luckily more than one way to do most of these things. I wouldn't be surprised if they even have <coughs> door activators and things like that already in game. I myself have already coded up quite a few of these in C++ as well, and <clears throat> you do interpolations all over the place, but it's um, this is how I want to do this one. So this is just going to interpolate a relative location for a component. Okay, that was weird. For a static uh, mesh, mesh. Uh, component it's actually not a static mesh because I'm gonna be I'm just gonna say a component because I'm gonna be uh, passing in the scene root here scene the scene component so I'm hopefully just be able to to use a scene component here let's see this is gonna be called every tick so there's a few things I need here the first thing I want is the actual component to interpolate. I'm hoping uh, this is gonna work. And this is the one I'm looking for. I can do a quick test just before I go too crazy and notes here. Uh, just call this function here. And see if I can pass in uh, this. Oh man, <clears throat> this this guy here. Yeah, okay, it's happy with that. So that's cool. That's that's what I'm gonna do. Okay. The next thing I want is the the stuff, the relative location. It's a vector. If you can span it, and then uh, what, uh, what else? What else do I want? The delta time. <coughs> it's gonna be a threat. I don't think I need much more than that. Should be fine. I'm gonna just hook this up so it's done. So, right, this is gonna be called every tick. Let me see if I can just straighten out some of these. Uh, not really. Okay, it's fine. I could, you know, create functions for these as well, but yeah, yeah, that's overkill. So because this is going to get called every frame, I want to try and do as little as possible. So if it's already pretty close to what I've asked it to be, initially it's going to be zeros. And uh, for location, and this guy's default location is zeros. So I want to do if it's a roundabout equal, don't do jack. That's going to be the first. So get the relative. Oh dear. Oh man. That was what I was afraid of. I was hoping to get the relative transform, which I can get off this guy. This is a component reference, scene component reference. This is an actor component reference. Man, come on, are you serious? These are the values I'm looking for, and I'm not getting them here. Which tells me I did something wrong. Yeah, man, this is the one I wanted. Scene component reference. Big poo. Still happy with that, though. Cool. Okay. Ooh. Yeah, okay. <clears throat> uh, 
Nothing exploded. That's good. Sometimes it does. Stuff explodes. And there's poo all over the screen. So I'm looking for the relative location. If it's roundabout equals, I'll go for a epsilon of uh, I guess one. Do you mean one point? What? Point zero. Then I don't want him to do anything. So if this is true. We're not going to do anything, but if it's um, false, we're going to set the relative location. <clears throat> and then we're just going to v-interp. <clears throat> Interpolate the relative location vector to this guy using the delta time provided. And then I want this really pushed. So I'm going to go 5. <clears throat> and I'm not going to sweep, and I'm also not going to teleport. I definitely do not want to sweep. I don't care if it connects with stuff, it's going to move right through it. That's what I want. So let's just comment this a little bit. Yeah, I should be able to test it already. By just going through here. I think. Even though I don't have the quest active, it doesn't matter because this is actually what I was. Yeah, man, there we go. That thing shut. You're trapped, man. You're trapped. You're not going anywhere. <laughs> Okay. <clears throat> that was one door. I need to now do the rest. And at some point, these guys need this um, door here needs to get replaced. It replaced it. That's a word. Replaced with a um, destructible mesh that's only destructible with a specific object. Hoping to get to that. Uh, probably not the stream, but <clears throat> soon, soon, maybe tomorrow. The cage will also need to do the same. Okay, so back to the blueprint. Now I want to see <clears throat> how much, how much, how much, how much, how much. I'm thinking of changing this to a to an array. But eh, whether I call this guy here directly or just use an array index, it's gonna be it's gonna be more lines of crap I don't need. So this blueprint is not meant for reusability. It's only gonna be used in this uh, level here. So now I need I need another door right here. And the cool old thing is, I think, I can just reuse the same activator for that door as well. Shall be sneaky like that. Let's see. It's going to be the same thing, so I'm just going to duplicate this hierarchy here. And that's not what I wanted. Look at that. No, serious. This how, they, this is how they saw that working. Duplicate this guy and then it just drops as a child inside of itself. Really, 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 really. Okay. <clears throat> Whoa. Okay. Call this door two. Aptly named very originally. The location is way off, so we'll need to fix that. The scale is uh, 3,000 in between. You've got to be kidding me, man. Zero. 
is this? I love how these values are approximated to the nearest like bazillion decimal. That's awesome. No, it's really not. Okay, let's get this guy. Where are you? Where are you all? Yeah, I could have created these doors in the level first and then added the blueprint. But it's... I just changed the parent. Whoa. It's not what I wanted. Let's just zero out this rotation here. I love how every time you change the rotation, the pointer just jumps back somewhere else. It's kind of weird. Okay, <clears throat> I gotta keep in mind that I need to keep, uh, leave this door open. Okay. Uh, give this a save. And just test it. So both of them should now shut. Come on, man. Come on, man. Puzzle, puzzle, puzzle. Yeah, cool. He's done. He's, he's done for. Cool. So now your only option is to make a break for it through there. That's what I wanted. Okay, where's the next lunch? Okay, so you're gonna move down here. This is definitely not the biggest you know, internal level in the world. It's just like a mini, mini level or whatever. Okay, once you're in here, I want this guy here to lock. <clears throat> so it's only two, two activators. That's not, that's not too bad. And then I'll have to do the parts where you actually complete the objectives. And that'll just be moving to it or reaching a specific area for this internal level. So that's pretty simple. Man, I'm actually not making a horrible time here. So let's start. It's going to go right off the bat and start with a um, door two root. Door to root scene component. <clears throat> it's got zero out values, which is what I want. Nothing special. Come on, man. And then I'll just duplicate this guy and then watch his scale values go nuts. This will be door two. Oh, not bad. Don't count. Never could. Okay. All of these guys' draw distances should be set, so I don't have to worry about that again. Physics should be correct. Indeed movable, so <clears throat> that's fine. Now let's get them positioned. Or this one positioned. Oh, what are you doing now? Let's find that blueprint. I really, I'll sort these out in a second. Where they, where, where they need to go. Controller blueprint, there we go. Looking for this guy. So now I don't want to move the root, I want to move the actual mesh. What do you do? <clears throat> Man, this mouse is twitchy. Twitchy mouse. Oh, what am I now? Oh, this is another area. I forgot about this area. 
I'm gonna do this area now. I'm gonna do this area here. <clears throat> with the save so I don't have to go through this again. Okay, so I can scale them up. Okay, no way you're going through there, man. Okay. And then just <clears throat> lifting up a little bit. Give that a save and then do the activator for this guy. Seriously, and then you parent it. Duplicate it and then you parent it. What? Sort of name convention here. Now 2500, I'm going to bring this down, position him, and then figure out what size I want. Come on, man. I'm going to make sure I select that guy. Incentive here to to go anywhere else. Sure, let's put it back. And there's nowhere else to go. So once you hit this guy right here, but it is avoidable. Which is bad. <clears throat> but there's no way you're going to get this ball out. <laughs> From here, right? Yeah. Let's just do this, man. We could avoid it. Could avoid it, but <clears throat> once you have that attract and throw skill, you can trigger the door and then try and get it out from here. I don't know, I don't know what benefit that would be. I was trying to think how I, how I would think as a cheater. Oh, yeah, I cheat, I cheat everywhere. <clears throat> Cheating is bad, don't be cheating, master. Okay. Can I, can, I, can, I, can I size this guy up, man? I'm gonna go nuts. I'm gonna go the big five. And then just put in. Put 
put in here. <clears throat> I can't avoid that sucker. Good luck to you. Okay, let's do the the activator. So I'll need another variable here, door to the activator. It's not what I wanted to do. Door 3 relative location. Close enough. The vector. Uh, okay. I'm gonna grab these guys here. <clears throat> Uh, begin um, component begin overlap and paste these guys here hook them up so now if it's true I'm just gonna set this guy here uh, negative I think that should be fine okay let's put those together the different uh, root here. working also don't want these colliders to hang around it's gonna destroy them All these triggers because <clears throat> they're doing physics checks I don't need them to do anymore once they've triggered so I'm gonna get rid of them that's gonna happen here So who was this? Door 3 activator here. Just destroy. Not going to be referencing it anywhere else. We can save some physics checks. Uh, door 1 activator here. What the crabs? Test. <clears throat> that should be fine. Come on, man. So now those physics, uh, that physics sphere is not going to be doing any more overlap checks. It's just a little. Yeah, the frame rate's going to be pew because it's in a small window, even if it's big. Doing a lot of stuff now. Also need to rebuild lighting. That will also help. Uh, what else? Okay.
<clears throat> back to this area. This door will already be shut. Now there's a tricky bit. You can save the game here with this checkpoint and you can reload the game here. And when you do, because you're spawning inside of the um, collision sphere, it's not going to trigger. It only triggers, you see there, let's do it like this. And now moving back, there we go. <clears throat> so that's another problem. That's not that hard to fix, actually. Because these objects are not self-aware, I mean, they're not aware of their state regarding um, the game state. I'm not going to worry about them uh, between saving and loading. That's definitely not what I want to do. I could move the checkpoint so that it's um, outside of the sphere of influence. I've also got to think of how much work is left to do and you have to redo a bunch of stuff. I could put it here. I'll give you a checkpoint here. So that's quite sneaky. Because then you're going to have to trigger this guy anyway again. There's no way around it. Sure, I'm going to do that. Just want to see <clears throat> where's my other checkpoint. There's only one. You obviously get a checkpoint as well automatically when you enter the area and when you leave. And that's why that other capstan level has so many uh, tricky bits to it because I also had to cater for that. So yeah, this game is checkpoint based. Max life, deal with it. Somewhere here is a car. If you were to load up from here, continue on, um, you have no choice but to trigger that activator there. See it shut there. Cool. Okay. Also means when you come back here, these guys will also trigger again. If they haven't been triggered already, otherwise they'll be gone. So if you're coming back from this way, they're going to shut again, right? This one's going to be um, non-destructible, you won't be able to destroy it, but this one's going to be destructible. And also something I didn't think of, I don't want static meshes spawning in front of these guys because it's going to block you, so I need to fix that quick, it's very easy to fix. I just need to change this to overlap all dynamic. That changes them from world static to world dynamic. My static uh, custom procedural spawners don't spawn on. Um, this, yeah, they don't spawn on world dynamic. <clears throat> Otherwise, they'd be spawning all over these spheres. Not sure if it's a bug, but what? Still did it. That is not correct. I did it wrong. Overlap all dynamic. Yeah, that's very clever. Block all dynamic is what I'm actually looking for. Well, that stupid rock 
be attaching to something else here, like this, these guys here, but you can still get through there. But I don't want them spawning on the on the grids. And then the weather's weather's starting up again. You're loud and loud. So now I shouldn't be able to get through here. Camera clipping is really annoying. Unfortunately, I can't really fix that without going into the engine code or whatever. Okay. <clears throat> now there's another area here somewhere. This one here. This one has no checkpoints in it, so this is just going to be a run for your life. Or if you have enough skills, you'll be able to fend off whatever's spawning here. Give me one second. And it sings to me the ballad of your name. I'm listening, and the voices echo in my dreams again. Okay, these areas here, um, I'm not going to block this guy, well, let me think about it. what's happening here. You're going to be breaking through this guy here, moving through here, into this area. So, this one's probably going to be blocked. And that one's going to be blocked. I can just block them by default, I'm not going to need activators for them with destructibles so if you don't have the ball you won't be able to get through there anyway or I can leave that one open and just block it off at the end here that's going to be annoying if you get all the way here and then see it's blocked and then you have to swim back and then you're going to be like oh, I hate you, you were soft because people cry Weather's really starting up again. So I'll add those in. They're not going to have activators attached to them. I just need to walk through this again so I know what I'm doing. <clears throat> So that one's gonna shut there. This is open, you move through here, you're gonna turn around, you're gonna come back, break it through here, come through here. This is gonna be open. And then this one I want blocked. And then the other end there blocked. There's gonna be a dude here with the dope. Okay. I think that makes sense. And then that's a good starting point, and then I'll just need to do the objective activators. And they're just going to be little spheres that's going to trigger. Cool, you've got to this area, you could only get here by using that skill, which is what this quest is about. And then you're um, <clears throat> going to get that objective completed notification. That's the other one. This is a lot cleaner than the capstan level, and I didn't comment the capstan level that well. Uh -huh. So, I'm going to stick to 55. This is going to be <coughs> door 4. 
Okay, originally, wow, that was a big lightning strike. Oh man. Okay, let's go to hold of that guy. But I assume I threw again. <coughs> oh, okay, I can just block off this one right now. I'll do it chronologically, I think. Which means uh, in some sequence. Okay, so I want one there. This one open, block that, uh, those two. <clears throat> so they're just going to be statically blocked and they'll be destructible. You'll have to break through them. They don't need activators. Shut them along there. That hit 60. City 5. Looks like. Okay. <clears throat> Let's duplicate this guy again. Fix the scale. So the reason I want to block this one off is so the player doesn't just swim through there from the get-go. I need to find that the other side is blocked. <clears throat> so it's quite a long swim. It's going to be a long And if you do re-enter this area again after having that skill, um, you're not going to have a ball to break through anyway, so it makes more sense to orient it from this side. Okay. <clears throat> Now I want to do the objective activators. And that's all going to be done <clears throat> using this guy. I'm trying to think what I want to do first. The first thing you're going to do is discover the. Uh, uh, Get your attract and throw skill. Just a little pickup. I need to do quick time events or any stupid crap like that. Um, let's see. Let me use a static mesh. Okay, 
gonna use the glow rock. Man, this thing is annoying popping up here, seriously. The glow. Let's go and check what I'm looking for here. Table ammo mesh, that's what I'm looking for. Okay. I'm just scaling, scaling up and positioning in here. Just wanna not make him this big. <clears throat> 15 is on. I don't like this texture. I want him to glow. Yeah, there we go. <clears throat> so there's not gonna be any waypoints here or anything, so you're gonna have to find this guy on your own. See how visible it is. You could be hidden by <laughs> static meshes <clears throat> spawning here. I don't know. Ooh, it's risky. <laughs> Obvious that's gonna be. <laughs> Not gonna be that evil. I don't know. <clears throat> I'll scan it up a little bit, let's see. Let's go for 25. That's not much better. Okay, whatever. And now I need the, <clears throat> the trigger. to trigger the next objective, which is going to be escape. And then you'll obviously have to figure out how to do that yourself, as the player. I'm just going to use a collision sphere again. Let's see if I can... Just steal and uh, duplicate this guy. Kind of parent him under that pickup. It's a little bit risky because he's got um, scale on him in the, in the um, editor now. But I definitely don't want to call him Sphere. So let's go for our uh, skill pickup trigger. Should really be parenting them the other way around. It's fine. Just 
gonna leave these values here and not mess with them and just do it in, in here. Oh, cool. It's about, it's about too big. Let's make this uh, 16. Yeah. Okay. And hook up the code. I'm still trying to think what's going to happen if you enter this level and you've already done this quest. I can leave the mesh there. Um, you're not going to get this skill again. I mean, you've already got it. <clears throat> but I, I kind of want it to disappear and not be there anymore. So I should. Just add it on the deactive um, on the quest completed here. I can just destroy this pickup if it's still there. Because the minute you pick it up, I also want to destroy it, so I gotta keep that in mind. So, in the event that the quest has been completed, I'm going to destroy this uh, pickup here if it's valid. for the overlap. I'm going to be using these guys again. Looking for one component begin overlap, come on man. And just pop these here. So if this condition is true, I want to do a few things, so I'm going to put that in a function just to not make this blueprint look like um, an absolute mess. Dynamics, give me one second, please. So this function is going to be responsible for um, providing you with the attract and throw skill if you don't already have it and then to um, mark your current objective as complete. And because this blueprint is only going to be used in this level here, I can name these uh, a little less descriptive and it's not going to need any any variables so um, provide the um, track skill complete um, objective I should say current objective get a hold of the uh, player character here. I'm just going to steal some code here. <clears throat> just get the player uh, character and use these. Cool, so you need to be a valid player character. And not, yeah, why not? Valid player character is fine. <clears throat> so to check for, um, I need an if here. I'm 
There's a dog. Okay, so let's go check um, how it's unlocked. This needs to be false. So if all those conditions have been met, um, and you haven't got this skill here, I'm going to give it to the player. But I'm going to give it the same way that I did it in the other level. Finding that in here is tricky. So I didn't comment this as long as I should have. Okay, I know it's in the uh, pickup trigger. Man, this is messy. No? Messy, messy. Damn. That's a door trigger. Trigger shooting, so it's this guy here. Oh, okay, cool. So, <clears throat> yeah, this is the this is the messy stuff that I'm looking for. So, if he hasn't got that skill, um, I add it to a list here. Can unlock, and then I provide the player with a skill point that he can spend, and then provide him with some um, pop-up info here. And then this has a, a little mini boss or boss whatever. So I don't need that, but I do want this all this messy. Messy stuff here. I only award the player if he doesn't already have at least one skill point. So, currently, this is the only way in the game that you can unlock these skills anyway. So, the whole idea is exploring so you can unlock these skills. And once you start unlocking them, you can start using them and then you gain more XP and points and whatever by using them. So, let's steal some code here. Oh man, what am I doing here? This print string must not be here. That was supposed to be a debug. Okay. So let's start stealing from... from here. I guess this is good. And then luckily this is in a, a function this time. I'll pop this over here. I need one more connection to the player character here. I could promote him to a local variable and just use that, but I'm, but I'm, but I'm not gonna. Man, this is really not very descriptive because I didn't actually tell you you can now go and unlock. This might obviously be uh, rewritten later, but this is good for now. There's no defeat the enemy in this. I think something like that should be okay for now. Change this to the correct skill, and this needs to be the correct skill. So now I've done double work here. Let's get rid of this and see if I can make it. It tells of this. I need another connector here to the player character. And then from here on, it's going to be up to him to do or her to decide what the hell they want to do. 
So if all those conditions are met, the player is valid. <clears throat> he has not unlocked Tract and Throw yet. It's going to come in here and pop him up with this player info, but also do all of this work here. Sorry, if he has not unlocked, he's going to go into the false split. And then we'll include it to his can unlock skills. Check if he has at least one skill point. If he doesn't, add it. And if he does, it's a messy line. Messy lines. Okay, so if he does not have <coughs> enough skill points, we um, add one. And if he does, we'll go into the false bit here because it'll be greater than one. Then we'll pop up this player info. Here. That's going to show for a few seconds, and then hopefully our player will be informed enough to know what to do. Provide skill and player info. And then I want this, oh something's not happy, this guy, oh, of course, he needs another connector. Really should have just used the local variable there. Come on, man, where you going, man? I don't even see this. Oh. This I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a complete chop. Alright. <clears throat> Okay, that should work. Let's see. Okay, so regardless of what happens here, in this section, um, but if the player character did trigger this, I always want this thing to this trigger to to die. So let's just let's just do that here. Whoa, we have to come back. <clears throat> just pop this in here. The trigger and the mesh. So for the destroy, I want to make sure all the return paths end up here, so there's no empty return paths. So if you have already have unlocked the skill, you're still going to see this message. I might not want, but I'll, I'll, I'll leave it. I definitely don't want to destroy it here because um, the AI themselves also extend this class. So if these conditions are, are not met, then I, I want to keep the keep the mesh there. I think this is going to work. Um, destroy, pick up trigger. Uh -huh. And then <clears throat> I still need to complete the objective. So I probably want to in inject that code here, but I just want to test this first. And the test is going to be really simple. It's going to kick off the play from wherever I am. Check my skills, I have nothing unlocked here, right? They're all locked. I'll do Jack. And hopefully, this will work. It did not work! But why? <laughs> I didn't call the function, that's why. <laughs> that was pretty stupid, man. And for you. Skill pickup trigger does nothing. So I'm doing this check now twice. I'm also doing it in, in this code here. <sighs> That's okay, I guess. So it's going to be two calls. And two calls, a cost and a couple of boolean checks should be alright. Damn it. Okay, let's see. Trigger, skill, pickup. Alright, now it should work.
Let's check the skills again. Right back, empty, nothing. Popped it. And immediately there's another problem. So now the skill is uh, unlockable. Bam, now you have it. And it's active. There in the bottom of this horrible HUD. The horrible HUD. Okay, cool. So that worked. But if I complete this objective, it's going to mess up the um, the player info that I'm showing currently. Because I'm the minute you complete an objective, it's, uh, the, the quest system is automatically going to pop up your next objective. So you're not going to see this message. So what I'm going to do is going to be a little bit sneaky. I think, but it's gonna be cool for me. Not for you. For me, it's cool. Not for you. <clears throat> Just one second. Okay, almost there. Oh man, damn. So, to fix that, and that, that pop up player info is really a simple uh, function actually. I, I think I've showed it before, but it doesn't matter. Uses the uh, talks to the player HUD and just plays a little animation on the um, on the HUD itself. And what that animation does is just plays with the opacity, I think, um, the opacity of a text uh, a text widget on the HUD. That's all it does. I think I can quickly show it. Where is my UI stuff? Player hut, 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 player hut. Okay. Yay, that's crappy. I think it's this guy right here. So there's an animation here somewhere called pop up player info or show player info. Show pop up info. So that just plays this animation here. And when it reaches the end, it just fades away. Um, but you won't see that now. But yeah, you can see that at the end, it, it fades away. I don't, I'm not 100% sure why it's visible right now, but I think I hide it somewhere along the line. I mean, there's just a function to call this animation. It's not that, not that impressive, really. But in any case, so if, if this gets called and then you complete the objective, the objective text is going to just overwrite that and start the animation again from the beginning and the player is not going to see this message and the game is going to be more confusing than it is already. Sure, I'm going to counter that with a simple little cheat. By using a delay. Trying to think how I how I did this before. And I'll need to go and check. Now I 
I can't remember where I did this before. use the timer function but um, I don't want to just need to remember I can't remember what that node is called just give me a second here do it in a drag nomad <clears throat> you can't have a latent node in a, in a function so if I was in the event graph I could do it here okay so I'll have to do this with a, with a function and then a timer which is fine um, I'll just create a function here and call this complete complete, complete objective doesn't need any input and then I'll just call that guy right here after destroying that component I can just call it here with the timer just want to compile that and I'll just wait <clears throat> I guess 10 seconds should be enough, or 7, something like that. Let's make it 10. The thing is, the objective message is going to stay in your, um, it's going to stay in your journal, so you'll always be able to get back to it and see it. But this, uh, this little helpful little blurb here isn't. You know I mean. Currently, the, the E key is the, the power key. I haven't added uh, remapping or mapping of keys in, in yet, but I mean, it's all mapped using the Unreal um, key, you know, what do they call this? What is this thing? Uh, under input, so it's all mapped up using the, the engine input um, stuff anyway. So there's a use power key um, and that's bound to E. So I should really be looking these values up and then displaying the, the bound key um, in here. But I'm not going to do that now. And uh, this is going to be a really simple function. I'm not going to pass any values to it. But I'm going to do some similar work to what I did just here. Just get the player character again. Wada wada wada. All that stuff. <clears throat> and then what I want to do is I want to call the uh, complete objective. And I need to think if this is on the quest or on the uh, player character. Yeah, there's a quest. This is what I want. Get the active quest. And if that is valid, call complete. So that's why <coughs> this trigger cannot fire if you have another quest active 
um, you shouldn't be able to get um, what's going to happen is you're not going to be provided with this quest if you come in here with another quest active you can only do one quest at a time that's how i designed this this whole quest system so if that's the case then that guy's just going to destroy um, and, and you won't be able to do this pickup anyway because if you do have an active quest and it's not this one then it's also going to mark itself as um, completed I think I need to double check that. I could always do an instance of here, for example, if that's not the case. So let's just say here. Um, Alright, objective completed. That's what I'm looking for. And that's in the um, C++ code. So now I just need to make sure that um, that's going to work the way I expect it to and I'm not introducing weird bugs that some poor sod has to go and figure out. And there's an easy way to do that just by checking out this guy here. I really hope I did this uh, the way I thought I did. Okay, so you're just not going to get the quest, that's fine. Um, let's check this guy again. And just go check his parent. Press the activated checks, the deactivated checks. And then everything ends up in here. And it only does it on if the quest has been completed. Okay, so that means I'm not actually going to fire this if you currently have another quest active. So I need to I need to cater for that scenario here. I don't want you to com complete another completely random objective that has nothing to do with this quest. So I'll need to do a check here and just make sure. do this so if the active quest instance is an instance of the brick quest and we're going to test this now anyway so if that condition is met then we'll mark the current objective as completed So that's then going to fire after <clears throat> 10 seconds. Okay. But to test it's going to take a little long because I need to swim all the way through. So I'm not going to do that now. Um, but I just want to see what it does if I swim through it and I do not have the quest active. If I can find it. And then I'm going to wrap it up for now. It's over here somewhere. Oh, there we go. What? Where are you going? What the hell? seconds here and see what happens. Definitely don't want to be getting any um, 
no pointers or whatever. Currently I don't have any quests active so it should just not throw any exceptions and crash or whatever. If you start calling um, functions on objects that are known, it might not always crash in Blueprint but in, in C++ it will crash, it will just die. But at least they have decent logging here, so you should be able to just track that and debug that pretty quickly. But it looks like it's it's behaving. Okay, cool. I think I'm going to call that for now. Um, the next stuff that I want to do is all going to be still surrounding uh, this level. I'm going to do a quick just playthrough and just make sure everything's still working. But I'm going to take a break first. So yeah, I think that's the stream for now. I'll uh, probably see you guys tomorrow. Maybe on Twitch, maybe on YouTube, depending on where the, the lag is the least. <laughs> cool.